Welcome back to the Behind Their Business podcast, or if this is your first time listening to the show, welcome. Today, our guest is going to share about how to navigate changing schedules, selling clients, and literally all of the curveballs that life throws at you when you're running a business and you're a mom. So in her business, our guest is a business and life coach for mom entrepreneurs scaling six and seven figure businesses who are committed to building a business empire and a family legacy, which I just absolutely love. And I'm all about that. So please welcome Katie Fleming. Katie, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to dive in today. Yeah, of course. So let's go on a journey. Tell people what you were doing before you started your business, how you kind of discovered this amazing and beautiful online world and what you were doing in the beginning of your business and what you're doing now. Yeah, it's really crazy to think back on because it feels like I've been doing this forever. Um, it's It all started, I've got my nine-year-old, she's almost nine. So she's kind of like my mile marker as far as how long I've been doing online stuff. Because when I was pregnant with her, I was in a job at the time working as like the CFO essentially for the, a big real estate brokerage. And I have that, I have the background in accounting, but I also have this creative marketer salesperson. What I actually was in that role was I was like the right hand of the CEO who was all over the place. And I got into marketing I got into sales. I got into all those things at like 20, one-ish years old or whatever I was. And I was pregnant with her and I knew like, okay, come time when she's around, I can't, this isn't, this doesn't fulfill like my desire to be really present with her, to be there witnessing the first steps, witnessing all the moments, breastfeeding, the whole nine yards. So I kind of started to venture into um, like virtual assisting operations and systems work virtually, and then finding this whole online world. Like I think my gateway, I always love asking people like, what was your gateway into the space? And I think it was um, Shaleen Johnson and Amy Porterfield. So those were kind of some of my gateways into like this whole world. <laughs> and as you get into that, you're immersed with all the knowledge and opt-ins and landing pages and all that stuff, which I'm very well versed in. But what I really came to realize over the years was I actually really love helping the woman who knows how to market, who knows how to sell, who knows how to do whatever for her clients. She just has a really tricky time doing it for herself. And so that's been the woman that I really help coach. And we do it in a way that's really unique uh, in the sense that like you, there's so many bros online. I love bros. I love guys, but like, you don't understand what it's like to be the primary caregiver in your home and be running a business and especially a profitable one and especially a successful one. You just don't get it. And so I started to just realize this gap and, and started to just kind of lean into the fact that like, this is the season I'm in. I'm always going to be a mom and life is always going to just get busier and busier. And that's what I found now having a nine and a six-year-old is that it was actually kind of easier when they were younger. <laughs> And now it's getting crazier with just like the schedules and everything, everything happening all the time. Um, and I know we're going to dive into that today because it's just perfect timing with my, our personal life. Our life has changed on the back end schedule wise again uh, with my husband's career. So it's just a perfect time to have this conversation about like, how do we balance and handle all the things and really thrive both in and out of our home at the same time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So many things. First of all, um, I found the online world just to like kind of answer your question. Um, even though you didn't ask the question, but you know, I found <laughs> it through a Facebook ad actually when I was on my lunch break at my nine to five job and I was targeted by, I'm almost positive. It was think creative collective, which is now boss project. I don't know if you're familiar mm. with those ladies. Um, and then also Amy Pornerfield and Jenna Kutcher. I was obsessed with their podcast and I would just listen to them constantly on my commute. So Definitely yeah. like th those are like the OGs of the yeah, online marketing world. So yes, I've been. And I'm so grateful for them to this day yeah. because they, they educate and they do stuff that I don't want to do. Like, I don't want to teach the basics of landing page or anything like that. And they really do that so well to where the person arrives on yours and I, like our social media, they're like, okay, I'm ready to actually do this thing. What does this look like to actually apply it to my life, my business and actually move the needle forward? Yeah, totally. And I love how you said that there's so many bros out there because that was another thing I noticed when I started is like all of these guys, I didn't have kids at the time I started my business. I have one and one on the way now, but um, it was like, just wake up at like four in the morning, work all day long, and then like sleep for four hours and then you're good. That's all you need. And I was like, okay, well, first of all, I'm in a job working like 60 hours a week. So that's not going to happen. And then yeah. after I had my son, I actually left my 
uh, full-time job at that point. But then I had a newborn baby. Now, yes, they sleep more than a toddler does, but still it's a human child that you are responsible for taking care of. Like you can't be expected to wake up at four in the morning when you went to sleep at two in the morning. Okay. That does not happen, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm really glad, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. But I would love to know like what, if you can remember, like when you were first starting out, like what were some of the big mistakes that you made in like those beginning stages of your business that you have since learned from? Oh yeah. One of the biggest ones was like thinking everything was the thing that was going to make it happen. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Say it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like I can remember so my husband, he got so annoyed at one point. He's like, okay, you told me already like two months ago, that was the thing. And now you're telling me this is the thing. And all I need to do is just put it on the card and it's going to be the thing. And he was like, I'm calling BS on this. And so, oh my gosh, I think that's the biggest thing is like, nothing is the thing. It's a journey. It's a process. It's evolution. It's growth. It's, it, it was not the course I got in Facebook ads. That was actually the thing that made me go become like a multi gajillionaire. No, it's never that. And, and the biggest lesson beyond that is you're the thing. And if you can learn how to optimize and, and master your energetic and strategic output, that's, that is the whole game. And that is what I do in my coaching. For sure. I was, I muted myself because I was laughing so hard when you were saying like the one thing, because my husband would say the exact same thing too. He's like, what is this charge for like $5,000 for this, for this course that you bought? I was like, oh, this is the thing that's going to get me to that next level. Like, this is the thing that's going to get me out of my nine to five job. It wasn't spoiler alert. It's a combination of things like you said, but oh, that's such a good, such a good point. I'm so glad you make that. You mentioned that. And so, it's usually like a very simple, the actual thing is usually very simple. Like, yes, we learn valuable things inside these courses that we bought and you and I both have spent bukus of dollars on those things, but yeah. like really at the end of the day, you've got to get out there and share and connect with people and sell. And even if you don't have an offer, if you were listening to us today and you don't, you're like, I don't really have an offer. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Just get out there and connect with people, have conversations. You'll be surprised where they go and how you can end up connecting them with their next step, whether that involves your pocket or not. Um, but if you just connect and seek to kind of help and see what are people struggling with? What solutions can I help them with? You will notice and start to evolve and create your offers. But like, I think those are the things we avoid in the beginning because it's uncomfortable. But like, it's really like, we're starting another business right now, my husband and I, and like the first thing I'm doing is setting up my CRM and my sales process, because if I'm not talking to people, how am I supposed to make sales? And I need those sales to fund all the other stuff that I'm doing to like grow the business. And it's just, it's, I'm, I notice now my resistance, like I have resistance because I'm a human, but I'm able to go through it much quicker because this is not my first business rodeo but I can understand how a lot of people start a business like we're doing in the sector that we're in with real estate and, and seeing that like most people don't do that. They're just getting hung up on education. They're consuming content after content, YouTube after YouTube. And we see the same thing in our industry. Mm -hmm. And oh. so I like, if you're listening to us today, please, for the love of Pete, press pause and sell your stuff today because the world needs it. Yes. You should be selling something every single day in some way or another, whether you're having a conversation with somebody like privately or you're like promoting your offer offers publicly, you should always be selling always, always, always. And even if somebody doesn't purchase from you right now, like I can't tell you how many times I've had a conversation with somebody. And then like three years down the line, they're like, Steph, I remember this conversation that we had three years ago. I'm still in the same place. Can you help mm -hmm. me? And I'm like, yeah, obviously I can still help you. So it doesn't always have to turn into a client right away and it doesn't have to turn into a client ever. That's something that a lot of people don't talk about either, but, um, yeah. okay. So now I want to talk about like what we're actually supposed to be talking about today, which is the changing schedules, selling clients, all of that stuff. So do you have any examples of some curveballs that life has thrown at you where you're like, okay, time to like transition and like figure out how to get over this hump? Yeah. I'm trying to think about. I mean, like today's a perfect example. I was planning on my husband being home. Today's a Thursday. I homeschool on Tuesday, Thursday, and my kids go to school Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I'm like the homework monitor on Tuesday, Thursday. That's basically our structure. And he was supposed to be home so that I have like an hour or two in the afternoon to have this interview, some other client work that I've got to do and just the stuff because I've spent most of the front half of my day 
in mom mode and he's not here. <laughs> so in that case, I'm like kind of tiptoeing around my children, like, okay, go upstairs, have good quiet time. There's they're six and eight, almost nine. They don't take naps anymore, but like go have some quiet time. If I tell them I'm podcast recording, they will interrupt the heck out of it because they love the camera and they love to talk. So like, I have to be like, just take a good room time. Mommy's going to go take a nap too. But here's the other thing I've done. I've laid out snacks and drinks. So that if they do come in, I can mute myself and be like, snacks and drinks are on the counter. There you go. So it's like little things like that, but it's like, I mean, it is what it is. And the cool thing is, is that you and I both get this. So if something happens, it's okay. And I think that's the biggest thing that I have had to learn along the way is like, it's going to be okay. This isn't as intense as it feels in your mind. Like it's, 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 that's been the biggest thing for me recently is just regulating myself to release the expectations over everything. So maybe it's, I don't show up to a zoom call with beautiful hair and makeup. That's okay. Today I happen to have it. So, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, let yourself off the hook and realize that it's not as serious as we all think, play, think it is. And a lot of people around you, if you built your business in the way that I have, and I know you have, we're surrounded by people who get it and who understand that this is not just a business, but it's our life and we've weaved them and connected them together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad that you, that you mentioned just like how, how you and I have both have managed to like weave our lives and business together in such a beautiful way that allows us to kind of roll with those punches a little bit easier. Yeah, sure. This is going to be a disgusting story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> um, our dog got sick and literally pooped all over our basement. It was oh everywhere and it was disgusting. And <laughs> my husband is an amazing human being. He used to be a nurse, but we have since retired him. So he's home full time with me, but he spent almost four or five hours cleaning everything up. And like, so he's better at that than I am because he used to deal with like humans. <laughs> <laughs> if I was home alone having to deal with that, like I would have just shut down for the day. Like I, I was responsible for taking I would care have of our son. The basement door. Well, I did because my my three year old was trying to run down there and play in the poop. So, like, what is what is happening? So, like, my entire What's with morning... dogs this week because mine barfed on a coaching call this week six times. Really? Oh my gosh! Like, maybe I can hear you on the the. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. Weird. Maybe, maybe something's happening to dogs. I don't know. But like my entire morning was then screwed over. I had to like reschedule calls. But again, like we have that flexibility to do that, which is amazing. But one thing that you mentioned is like, this is something that took me a really long time to work through is releasing that, I would call it fear. But it was like this feeling of control of like having to have like the perfect schedule and everything having to go to play maybe like perfectionism. I guess a little bit, um, because if I had to reschedule a call, then I was not like professional. I guess that's from my corporate days, right? Yeah. That coding that's in there. But, um, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and like how, especially women and moms, like we feel this need to just feel like to, to be perfect all of the time. And to, we have these high standards for ourselves that I think society puts in our mind from a very, very young age. Yeah. I like to look at this, um, kind of a different way because I think when you're it's, it's, there's so many subtleties to this. So like, as you're listening, tune into like where you are on the spectrum, but if you are somebody who never can never allow yourself to reschedule, you may go through a season of allowing yourself a lot of grace to reschedule and that might be good. But then there comes a point, And I remember this, I probably hit this last year where it was like, okay, shit's hitting the fan. Can I cuss here? I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Stuff's hitting the fan and you're like, okay. (laughs) Stuff's hitting the fan and you're like, I really would love to cancel this call. But also at the same point, you're like, but also this is like an edge for me. I need to be able to show up no matter what. And so you want to push the boundaries on that. So it's, it's like two sides of the same coin. And then you kind of find your balance of like, what is honoring myself? And then also what is honoring my commitments? And then you find your balance there because my goal is to be so solid in my power that I can show up no matter what is externally happening. And yes, we're going to have to change calls. And yes, there's going to be moments where it just makes sense. And yes, I look, I do practical things where I look at my calendar for the next two weeks and kind of see where's, where are there some intense dates? Like for example, this past Tuesday, we had haircuts, piano lessons, and orthodontist appointment. I don't know how I scheduled those back to back, but I'm like, 
for me to not lose my insanity driving around Dallas, Fort Worth, which everywhere you go is like 45 minutes. I need to reschedule. So then I, I chose the one that was the easiest and whatever, and we moved on. But it's important for you to not to just reschedule because like life gets hard because there's going to be that regardless. Because what I found is like, for example, like I did a live program last year and as I was doing it, there were days that were like, I couldn't even imagine recording a live stream or doing a live stream. Ooh, better example. Back in February, I had absolute crazy intense drama happening within my business. And I was supposed to deliver a masterclass called the ease frequency. And it's all about how do you show up with ease, even when things are not easy. It's like bringing this frequency of ease to all of life, easy and hard. And I'm like, this is funny, God, thanks for bringing me this incredibly difficult situation. While I also have to deliver a masterclass about how to hold a frequency of ease while it's really freaking hard. And um, like, this is perfect. So like, there were moments where I'm like, maybe I should reschedule, maybe I should change. But actually, the the way life was showing up for me was the exact thing I needed to be able to deliver the thing that I was being asked to create in the first place. So consider that sometimes the way life is, is actually helping you make an even greater impact with the person or the appointment on the other end of the screen. Like there might be some little conversation that you guys are able to connect with. I mean, it even goes to like, I start to see people out and about like at Starbucks or the orthodontist or the hair cutter. And like, there's some situation in my life that I'm able to bring into my conversation with them and impact them in some way. I, I don't even really fully know how, but I, we do with our presence. So those are the things I would say is just kind of be self-aware and look at why am I canceling this? What am I hoping to achieve by this? Is this, am I going to be proud to look back on this decision two weeks from now, a week from now, a day from now, and be proud that I canceled that? Or am I maybe trying to hide from something that's uncomfortable? Or am I trying to just, you know, be in my perfectionism and not fully allow myself to be seen in imperfection? Those, some, some of those questions can help you kind of juice on what's best for you because only you're going to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's such great advice. So thank you for sharing that. And one other thing that you mentioned was um, you were talking about how the behind the scenes can affect the front of the scenes. So like how your marriage can even affect your marketing, which I thought was really interesting. So do you want to share a little bit more about that? I just love, I love, um, what's the word alliteration. So your marriage and your marketing. Oh my works. gosh. I, okay. Our dog is named Vinny the Vishla because I am so obsessed with alliteration. <laughs> I agree. I love it. And when I'm writing copy and I can make it match, I'm like, yes, this is yep. so good. So um, I don't really know specifically how your marriage might be affecting your marketing. There's not really like a framework, but the whole point of that statement is that, you know, the things that you're experiencing behind the scenes in your life are, they can be fuel in your business or the same patterns can be showing up in your business. So if you tend to, for example, if you tend to have like something hard in your life, that um, like maybe growing up, you would start to do a new hobby. And then the moment it got hard, you were like out, you pieced, you were out, you were done. Maybe it's happening in your business too, where like you get into a strategy and you start to implement it, but then it gets hard and you piece out, but you haven't allowed any marketing strategy to actually take foot, which you and I both know, like that's, it's going to be at least 30 days, if not 90 to allow a strategy to actually work. And most people are just more comfortable flipping around from this to that, to that, to that, to Stephanie's method, to Katie's method, to this method, to that. It's easier because that was we literally the beginning of my system. business. So, sorry to interrupt you, but that was literally the beginning of my business. I would get so frustrated if like something wouldn't like click or hit within like a week. And then I would go as far as to just start a brand new business because I was getting so frustrated with it. So I, I completely resonate with that. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, you're good. That I mean, that, we have to get really good at stewarding what I call the vision and the gap. So that's the the place between where you are and where you want to go. So there's always a gap. There's a gap in everything. There's a gap in your home. There's a gap in your marketing. There's a gap in that new strategy that you put out. There's a gap in like you putting that story on social media, selling your offer and you haven't heard from anybody yet. There's a gap, right? And you have to be able to manage and hold your energy even when the world isn't giving you the feedback yet that it's working. Can you hold that vision before it actually works? And that's what actually allows the thing to work in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I always say 90 days, like you need to give something minimum 90 days before you can actually 
figure out if it's working or not <laughs> because people are busy. People are not just staring at your content all day long, trying to figure out if it's right for them or not. Um, but I would love to know, do you have any examples, if you're comfortable sharing, of course, um, of your own marriage where you noticed where things were kind of like affecting behind the scenes was affecting the front end? Mm, let's see here. There's a lot. I'm just trying to think top of mind. Um, you know, one of the things that I've really been working on over the last year or two is like healing my masculine side. So I'm very much a masculine doer go, go, go strategy, all that. Um, I'm and laughing often, like, because I'm like, yeah, yeah, same. Yep, yep. Do. <laughs> and like, I've been, I've got the feminine side, but then it was like, I had to buff the masculine side so that it could actually, my, it's hard to explain this. So that the feminine could actually be soft enough to receive my husband's masculine side. Like he wasn't able to be in his masculine because I was always, because you always kind of just take the play. So if, if I'm in my masculine, he's going to probably play the feminine role. And if I'm in my feminine, he's going to play the masculine role. But what was interesting is I was always like, why won't you, like, I was kind of resentful. Like, why, why don't you play the masculine? And what I didn't realize was it was because I was playing it in our relationship. So I would say like, when I kind of started to heal that and soften in my business, the way that showed up was actually people felt safer to connect with me. So I had more people in my inbox crazy and like, believe it or not, they would say like, I don't know what it is, but there's something about your energy now that I feel more connected to you. Legit. I had many messages and I was like, Oh, I know what it is, but <laughs> this is cool that this translate in the ethers. I like this. So, and then even just like allowing myself to have both polarities. Of course, we all have both polarities, but to kind of harmonize them, that's been the journey in my marriage. That's just helped a lot with just intimacy and whatnot, but also in my marketing and in my business, it's allowed me to connect even deeper to my audience. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing like as you talk about this, because same, like 100% same mm -hmm. this, I, I didn't even know what like the masculine and the feminine was until a couple of years ago that did not exist in my frame of reference, but it was the same for me. Like I was always the masculine. My husband was more feminine. And then I would say last year, maybe two, I don't know, sometime in the last like two years, I started to heal that. And then guess what? Earlier this year is when like the feminine went, went like full into effect. And guess what? I'm pregnant now. So ah. talk about like a real life example of like embodying the feminine and actually receiving a human. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I can completely, completely relate to that. Yeah. That's, that's a really good example. Um, we do have to wrap up soon because I don't want the episode to go too long, even though I feel like I could talk to you about this for like days and days, but yeah, we could. I would love to know, like, what does a typical, quote unquote, typical day or week look like for you guys? Now, I know you mentioned that you do like a mixture of like homeschooling and then do they public schooling or they're in a private school. Or private schooling. Okay. So like what what does that look like for you in your life, in your business, with your kids, with your husband, all of it? Yeah. So he used to be on a schedule where he would be home Monday, Tuesday, and half of Wednesday. So I kind of had some support as far as like, you know, pickup duties and driving around here and there. But now like it's full on I am mom from sun up to sundown, Monday through Friday. So it's kind of a new season that we're in here. But um, yeah, they go to, a, it's called a university model school. So they go Monday, Wednesday, Friday in a classroom, the teacher teaches, I don't have to do curriculum or anything. And then Thursday, Friday, um, I do basically just the homeschooling, the homework monitoring, basically. So we have you know, time to just live and do things and space. It's just, it's a perfect combination for us. So my main goal is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's when I'm doing calls. That's when I'm creating content. That's when I'm recording, whatever. That's when all that happens. And then Tuesday, Thursday, the only obligation that I usually have on those days are one-offs like this, where I usually have childcare booked, usually, <laughs> or um, boxer check-ins with my clients, which is something that I've just been able to do in the back pocket of my day anyway. And I love it and doesn't take up crazy amounts of time. So um, those are the only commitments I have. Oh, and create content. But like when we correct, when we connect your life and your business, your life is content. So you living is kind of the content. Like my life is like my brand. And so all I've got to do is slap a CTA on it, maybe extract a little intelligence about it and like what I'm learning or what happens. Even when things go wrong, there's some kind of lesson there. And your job is to just like literally take a picture 
and extract the intelligence and then put your CTA on it because your life is the content. Yeah, no, I completely, I completely agree with that. I was actually talking in my Instagram stories today about how people work way too hard to try to create content for their business. And like, it's literally in front of you, like the people who you want to work with, they're telling you everything that you need to know. And also like when you live your life, you are your brand. So it's much easier than people, than people make it out to be. But um, thank you again for being here today, Katie. Thank you for talking about what's going on behind the scenes of your life. And I'm um, just sharing some of those tips and tricks for people who aren't truly successfully navigating the curveballs yet, but who will eventually be on track to do that. So thank you again. And if somebody wants to connect with you, where's the best place for them to do that? Yeah, I would love for you to come hang out with me on Instagram. That's the best place. I would love to hear in the DMs. Just send me a message and let me know that you heard me from Stephanie's podcast and let me know like what your number one takeaway was. And I would love to just get to know you and your story. And what's your handle? Oh yeah, that's a good piece of information. <laughs> Katie Fleming. <laughs> Perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes as well for easy access. So thank you again for being here. Thank you so much.